again, my friends, this is Kunita, and I greet you warmly, warmly in the name of our risen Lord, Yeshua, Almighty God, and I welcome you back to the podcast from the book of Jeremiah, for I will surely save thee, but thy life shall be for a prey unto thee, because thou hast put thy trust in me, saith Jehovah. This verse, my friends, and others like it, are one of the unshakable, hidden things of the Lord to those who trust Him. It is a promise given for the hard places of life and a promise of safety and life in the midst of the tremendous carnage of this present world. A life for a prey. Thy life will I give thee for a prey in all places, whether thou goest. Now just what is the meaning of a life for a prey? It is very significant, my friends. It means a life snatched out of the jaws of the destroyer. As David snatched the lamb away from the lion. It means that the work of the Holy Spirit in the inner man is done in the midst of the storm. It does not mean the removal from the noise of the battle or the presence of our foes. No. No, my friends. It means a table in the midst of our enemies, a shelter within the storm, a fortress amid our foes, a life preserved and even victorious in the face of continual pressure, observation, stalking, and attack. You must understand, my friends, we who live unto God are always engaged, even unto death sometimes, for the love of our Lord, that the life of Christ may be made manifest within our mortal flesh. Thy life will I give unto thee for a prey clearly states the truth that we live and walk among ravenous beasts that are continually seeking to devour life. Voracious enemies always, always on the watch who are determined and eager to pray on this new life which God has kindled in our soul. This newness of life purchased by the blood of our Lord is given by God to all whom he has called and is kept, my friends, not by us, but by him and preserved by his power from ever being destroyed or distinguished. We are preserved in the midst of the foe by a perpetual miracle of Almighty God that we at times might not even see or be aware of as we pass through or over the snares, the traps, and the attacks of the enemy. Like a burning lamp passing in the midst of a gale, the power, the faithfulness, the faithfulness, there we go. <laughs> and the wisdom of God are continually at work in keeping the fires of His life within us both alive and whole even while in the midst of all enemies. Now, because of our infirmities and the weaknesses of our flesh, we often pray, all of us, to be delivered from the attacks and the calamities that they bring upon us. All of us are guilty of this. But here, my friends, we err. We were not placed here by God to be taken out of the way, but to be engaged, fully engaged in the work our Lord has called us to. Here, here, my friends, we must pray not for relief, but rather for strength. 
strength to become all that he would have us to be, while in the very presence of the assaults and the calamities, to live amidst them as long as they last, in the consciousness that we are held and sheltered in the hands of a loving God and can therefore remain in the midst of them so long as they continue. You know, we read that the furnace at Babylon was heated seven times more than it was normally heated. But the three Hebrew boys were kept a season amidst its flames as calm and composed and uninjured in the presence of the tyrant's anger as they were before their time of deliverance even came about. And that long, long night did Daniel sit among the lions and when he was taken up out of the den no manner of hurt was found upon him. Why is that? It's because he believed and trusted in his God. My friends, these men flourished in the presence of the enemy because they dwelt in the presence of God. There is a life given to the elect when the spirit of the living God quickens their souls, a new and a different life, a life eternal, out of the fullness of the Son of God. This life is a personal, individual life. Thy life will I give unto thee for a prey. This life in the fullness of Christ is breathed by the Spirit of the living God into the soul. But this life which is given to the child of God is, to, is given to him in God's peculiar way as a prey, as a prey in a field of beasts that the strength and the glory of God might be made manifest in our utter weakness. But I will deliver thee in that day, said the Lord, and thou shalt not be given unto the hand of men of whom thou art afraid. For I will surely deliver thee, and thou shalt not fall by the sword. But thy life shall be for a prey unto thee, because thou hast put thy trust in me, said the Lord. We all know, my friends, God will take care of all those who trust in Him. Yet the truth is, some pass through the fires and some do not. There are many martyrs among the persecuted, those who went into the flames and did not come out. But my question is, what is that to you? Were you not snatched from the jaws of eternal death himself when God reached out to give you life? Thy life for a prey. Oh, my friends, the once dead do not fear or shrink from the battle or from death. These are simply given an extra grace of being taken home by God. Yet on the other hand, there will be individuals who will go through the flood and the fire as a witness and also as a minister, ministering through their presence and their suffering during and after the torrents. Daniel, Elijah, Noah, the three Hebrew boys, Jeremiah, Baruch, and many others were brought through the fires of the enemy in the sure and loving hands of Almighty God. And we too can have that confidence, my friends. Whether God will bring you, me, or any of us through the fires or bring us home, these decisions are in His hands, my friends. They're in His timing and in His plans. And these things are, quite frankly, 
beyond our field of concern. What we need to concern ourselves with is this. Are we putting our full trust in Him? Can we say that we serve only God with our actions, thoughts, deeds, and devotions? God sends judgment upon the world as a whole for its evil. But he also always keeps his hand and his eye upon his lambs. Oh, my friends, that we should be as faithful, that while we walk for this short time through this world, we would live humbly and holy for him in the midst of all of them through the power and grace he has bestowed upon us. Finally, my friends, finally as I close today, let me make this personal. How is your walk with God? Are you just holding on to his hand, playing at life, listening casually to what he has to say? Or is your life sold out for God in the presence of the enemy? With the battle and the fires raging around you, are you fully embraced in that loving life and death grip of Almighty God that the world can neither undo, destroy, nor ignore? Amen. Amen. Excuse me, I had to move something off the desk there. <laughs> oh, my friends, like a flaming taper in the midst of a gale, our life is given us for a prey. Adonai, Adonai. And as I close today, my friends, it is my prayer for you that you go always in the strength and power and love of the living God, that he might always go with you. Until the next time, my friends, have a wonderful day in our risen Lord. Goodbye.